Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you know that this is an intermediate to advanced project. All that means is I'm not going to step out every single detail of every process that I cover in the course. But if you're a little bit behind and you need to get up to speed so you can follow along with this project, check out our new course on Udemy.com, Colorful Silver Jewelry. It's a comprehensive jewelry making course for beginners that covers everything that you need to know to get started making jewelry. Plus there's some really helpful tips in there to help you set up your studio. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make an interesting wire clasp. Now, this video is an intermediate project video, which means that I'm not going to show you every single step in the assembly of this piece. And those of you who've watched every single Online Jewelry Academy video, you're going to be fine. You're experts at this point. Now, let me talk about this clasp a little bit. You can see that it blends into the entire statement necklace that I've assembled. Now, I'm not suggesting that you make this exact necklace, but it's pretty easy to do. And on top of it, like I said, the clasp will blend perfectly in. But this is a cool clasp because the first thing is that it will function just by pulling it apart and look at that it doesn't come apart completely so it has a safety aspect to it but you can remove it so that you can take the necklace on and off and it does have a little pull or push right here so that you can open and close the the clasp it has a connector to the top loop and then there are two contacts that grab the top ring of this capsule shape. Now the bottom has the shape of a safety pin. And what that allows me to do is if ever it becomes a little loose, I can just pull on it and it creates a little more tension so that when I put it back into the capsule, it'll just click back into shape and we're ready to go again. Now I've duplicated this same type of clasp on this necklace here, and again, you can see how I'm using a shape or a link that has that capsule shape, just to be consistent, but you can see it looks really pretty, and this is a necklace that anybody could wear successfully. It's very summery and light feeling, and look at that. The clasp blends right in, and in fact, it also creates kind of a cool looking feature element. And it functions exactly the same way. All I have to do is give it a little push and look, it's a safety and there we go. And I can take it right off. So you don't necessarily have to make it on a very large scale. You could do a much smaller clasp for say a necklace or even a bracelet. It's up to you. Sky's the limit. So let me clear these things away and then I'll show you how to assemble the piece. Before I show you how to assemble the clasp, I want to show you this. It's a quick model that I made using just binding wire. And as you can see, it's not even soldered together. I just lashed it together with smaller binding wire, but I made both components of the clasp. And what this did for me is it helped me to get the scale right. It saved me from pulling my hair out and trying to get the measurements and the proportions correct to fit with my necklace. So you might want to make a model like that before you begin. What I'm going to be working with is this material back here. It's 14 gauge round brass wire. Now I know what you're thinking. It doesn't all look like brass wire, but it is. I just annealed this ahead of time. So it's a little darkened and it picked up that funny coppery blush that brass gets when you heat it. But that'll all be fixed in the finishing process. So from this wire, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a large ring like this one here. And this ring will then be compressed in a bench vise to create the capsule shape. And we have a video on how to do that. In addition to this capsule shape, I also need two smaller rings. And these are going to be the receptacles for the mechanism that goes into the clasp. Now, the thing to notice about these smaller rings is that they are narrower than the outside measurement of the capsule shape, 
but they are slightly larger than the interior of the capsule shape. Now what this enables you to do is to file notches to receive these small rings. But before I begin filing the notches for the small rings, I like to give myself a guide for the file to follow. I do this by just sawing a single stroke with my saw blade along the guideline. Now what this enables you to do is to file notches to receive these small rings. It's similar to the process that you would use to file notches for prongs on a single gallery setting. The notches don't need to be too deep and they just need to be straight and deep enough so that they'll hold the rings. So what that means is you're going to have to test periodically as you file. Go a little bit slow. If you get them nice and straight and there's a bit of tension holding them in place, what that will save you from is having to use binding wire or a couple of third hands to hold them straight during the soldering process. Now, you can solder them using either paste solder or solder pallions. And if you want to get a little bit tricky and have even more control over the solder pallions, you can engage a pick soldering method. And we have a video on that as well. Once the piece is assembled and soldered, you're just going to pickle it and brass brush it as you would normally do any other piece on your bench. When you're done soldering the capsule portion of your clasp, you'll end up with something that looks like this. Now remember to minimize the amount of solder that you have on the surface. Next, what we need to do is to make the portion of the clasp that is on the opposite end of the chain and fits into this part. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start by making the attachment to the chain. And to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up a pair of round nose pliers and you'll grab the end of the wire about three quarters of the way into the jaws and you're just going to turn a loop. And this is what's going to connect to the chain. The next thing that we want to do is we want it to drop back down into the clasp. So I'm just going to grab it with a pair of pliers and pull down just to give it a nice turn. And you can check this by just running the wire through the clasp. And you can see how this is going to be above the clasp. So while you have it in this position, you can mark where the wire is going to connect with this top loop. And what I usually do is I give myself a mark a little bit away from that top loop in order to compensate for the curve that I'm about to put into it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm just going to position them on that mark and pull this wire back like so. Then I'm going to come into that little corner and I'm going to drop into the pliers a little bit further and I'm going to go all the way over the pliers. Then I'll step up in that same position and pull the wire up. Now, you may want to take your flat nose pliers and just sort of tweak this a little bit just to make sure that the curves are nice and straight. And then after you get this curve into your wire, you can just insert it back into the clasp to give it a check. So we're still above the, the clasp and I'm trying to create this part of the clasp as if it were in its most open position. So what I want to do now is pushing this piece with the indentation all the way to one side and then I'm going to mark well above the bottom of the capsule. And this is where I'm going to give the piece a full turn just like it's going to be the bottom of a safety pin. So I'll put my pliers about half, I'll grab it about halfway into the plier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn a complete loop around the plier. Like I said, it's going to look like a safety pin. Just like that. So we can check this now. So I'll grab my piece. And this time I can go through the top. You can see where I'm missing the bottom of the clasp. I have contact here and I'm going to push it open and hold it. And again, I'm going to make a mark 
slightly below this loop to compensate for the curve that I'm going to put into it. And this other indentation is really where most of the tension is going to be. So I'm going to grab the wire right above that. Now I want to go in and out. So I'm going to turn the wire this way. Okay. And then I'm going to come into that corner, pull it up, and then step up and pull up. And you see how they sort of match. They give it like a waistline. So now I can open this up slightly and I can approach the bottom part of the clasp from the top as if it was actually functioning. So I'll squeeze it. We drop in. Remember, I'm going to pull it open to create that tension. And you can see it, I've avoided the bottom. I've got contact on one side and the other side. And it's still gonna hang straight so that it will hang properly on the necklace. Now I have all this area that I can make the push for it. So I'm just gonna cut part of it away. And actually I'll go a little bit above that clasp. I'll take this out. All right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the end of the wire close to the end of my rosary plier, and I'm just going to turn a loop. And it's a closed loop that I can just turn out, and I can refine with other pliers or a hammer or files as necessary. And there we have the clasping end that fits into our capsule receptacle. So now you're ready to test it. Now, if you pick this up, remember it acts like a safety clasp. So it loops in and then you're going to just push it down and you can open it up. You, you can build up that tension, especially if you hit that bottom part with a hammer and forge it a little bit. But there you go. It's, it's ready to be attached to a necklace and be worn. Now, I wouldn't say that this is quite finished yet. I see a little bit of copper blush on the surface, but that can re be removed with a nickel pickle. And we have a video on that. And we also need to shine it up. You could do this through tumbling, or you could use some silicone attachments on your flex shaft to shine it up nice and bright. And we also have a video on that as well. I hope you like this clasp. If you do, be sure to like the video. We have plenty more like it at onlinejewelryacademy.com. And if you're not a subscriber yet, click the button in the lower right hand corner of the screen and you'll instantly become a subscriber and receive weekly notifications of new videos. We also regularly post to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you'd like to support the production of a future Online Jewelry Academy video, you can do so with a contribution through patreon.com. Thanks for watching.